Hi, I'm Jocelyn Taylor, and you're watching Dyke TV. Dyke TV. Television to incite, subvert, provoke, and organize. And now... When we came up with the name Dyke TV, it was a working title, but it really felt like the energy of the show fit more with Dyke TV than any other title that we came up with. Because we were about, our show was about being really out, kind of in your face, um, television. And, and Dyke TV um, was out and in your face. The segments range, you know, usually they're three to five, five to seven minutes. Occasionally we have longer pieces. Um, the show is a magazine style format, so you've got art. We've got news. Deborah Glick here in New York. She is our only open lesbian in Albany in our state capital. We also have producers all over the country and occasionally we get stuff that's international um, and we really try and, and not, we are in New York, but we, we try and really report on what's going on in the rest of the country. We have producers meetings. It's a way of getting people involved. Uh, people come that have ideas of their own or they just sort of want to help out with ideas that we have and they get involved in that way. I took the basic video course. Before I took that course, I didn't I'd never picked up a camera. People coming in here and feeling like they have a voice and that they can cover issues that are important to them and it's going to be on TV and that somebody actually cares about it and that somebody wants to see it and see what, you know, their life. Uh, and they can take control over representing themselves. Idea for Dyke TV was Ana Maria Simos. She is a lesbian playwright in downtown. Um, who was very active at the time in the Lesbian Avengers. Doing a dyke march because we want to go beyond visibility into having our own distinct political identity, our own lesbian political agenda. We have issues that are lesbian issues and we have a lesbian viewpoint. In 1993, when Dyke TV was founded, the New York City was much, much more active politically. ACT UP was really active. The Lesbian Avengers was, were doing like weekly actions. And it just seemed like there needed to be a lesbian program that could, you know, cover all the events that were happening. Dozens of lesbian activists slowed rush hour traffic into Tampa today, protesting hate crimes in the Bay Area. What's the problem, officer? I have nothing against homosexuals. I, I, I don't want to give that impression. They, they have a right to their privileges. I don't think they have a right to solicit my grandchildren. In the early 90s, right around 1992, Pat, Pat Buchanan came on television for the uh, Republican National Convention and said, we're in a cultural war. We were fighting to get basic human rights and basic civil rights uh, in this country, and there was a serious backlash. We had to do this. We had to make this show. So people were very, very motivated. It, it wasn't like you came into an institution that already existed and sort of worked along with it. It's like you created the institute. We created the institution that we wanted. And I, an institution is definitely a stretch. We wanted to make a television show, and it happened by the, you know, uh, energy and hard work of a large group. We get anything from a 15-year-old in Kansas City, Missouri, who's seen Dyke TV for the first time and just seen Dykes for the first time, and, you know, her world is forever changed. And then we get the, um, the older lesbian couple that lives in the middle of nowhere on a mountain that, you know, gets Dyke TV at 5.30 in the morning, and they wake up every, every morning at 5.30 in the morning to watch us because they love us. Um, and then we have our, uh, our gay male population that watches us and absolutely loves the show and you know just writes about how happy they are when you know there's like a segment on gay male cheerleading or something like that um and then you know we have our our uh, our lesbian separatists that watch the show that uh that get angry when we have gay male cheerleaders on the show because of course uh the queer community in a lot of ways and that in that respect is just like um mainstream 
hetero community in that, you know, gay men are still men and they still are in the limelight and they still get most of the media attention is on men. In the early days, they put me on camera with a very particular slot uh, called Ann Northrop Mouths Off, where I did commentaries that were meant to be sort of loud and outrageous. Screw you, Bill Donahue. Dick to hell with you. Michael Douglas. My strategy, I go to hell. Hell. lesbian homicide. only civil rights. Who the hell do you the think you are? Guys. <laughs> So I'd work myself up into a particular rant about something. Uh, I remember one commentary in particular that we shot here at my house in my kitchen where I had a knife in my hand and slammed it into a uh, cutting board in anger at something, probably something some men had done. We have a particular worldview that uh, is not often understood or heard. You have a right to talk about your life. Tolerance. I'm not tolerating them anymore. And I'm not tolerating straight men who are voyeuristic about my sex life. I'm not tolerating straight women who are uncomfortable with me in the room. The hell with all of them. The, what are the limits of tolerance? Here are the limits of my tolerance. Fuck you. There's been huge changes, and I feel like Dyke TV was a part of making those happen. You know, we basically led the way, and then Ellen DeGeneres came out, and then stars started to come out. Hi, this is Martina Navratilova, and you are watching Dyke TV. I'm Kate Clinton, and uh, you're watching one of my favorite channels, Dyke TV. I can't get enough of it. Feelings in this country have changed incredibly in terms of, in terms of the way the society views lesbians there's been a huge shift. Now it's not perfect, it's still you know, not so great. But take from when 1986, from when I came out, until now, and there's been an enormous change. You can be out in high school. I think the climate for gay people in general has just improved dramatically since Dyke TV started. I mean, there wasn't, like I said before, there wasn't one gay character on television when Dyke TV was founded. Um, I mean, we're still majorly discriminated against. I came out in, in the 1950s, and if anyone had told me then that there would be public figures like Ellen DeGeneres or Kay D. Lang, I, I would have thought that I'd died and gone to heaven. But of course, it, it's a tiny segment of the population, and that's what um, America in general gets to see. They don't get to see the nitty-gritty of, of our lives. And that's why uh, things such as Dyke TV are so indispensable. There's just not enough of Dyke TV. Whoa, they're excellent. So keep watching, keep supporting the best Dyke TV.